This is Report to Wyoming. I'm sitting with Amy White, the Executive Director of Dress for Success Casper. And we have some exciting things to talk about with, is it a new boutique? Yes, we actually are a brand new affiliate for Dress for Success. We were awarded our affiliate in November of 22, opened in January of 23. And uh, we've had our boutique open in Seton House uh, since early March. Uh, but felt like it was a time for a grand opening and uh, to let more of the community know who we are. And so what is this boutique? Is it is it um, it's specifically geared towards workwear, right? That's right. The boutique is set up as um, a location for women that are looking for clothing for interviews. Uh, we service women that are doing internships or temporary work. And we also service women that have taken on a new position so that they uh, and perhaps don't have the appropriate attire. So it's a it's a one on one styling visit with one of our volunteers. Uh, we get to know the person that we're meeting. Uh, we talk with them about their likes and dislikes and the kind of position they're taking, and then they actually get to go on a, on a shopping spree. Uh, they get to select clothing that they like that fits uh, their style and the job that they're taking, and uh, hopefully uh, that propels them with confidence as they they go into interview for that job. So many questions. First is, how did you get involved in this kind of work? Well, I was with the DECO for quite a long time, and uh, Dress for Success was uh, one of the DECO's primary charities. And so when I left the DECO in 21, uh, I decided that this might be something that I wanted to do and certainly something I knew Casper could use. And then when people come in, is it is it free or is there a small fee? How does that work? There is no charge for the women that we serve, and women can either be referred to us through a referral agency or they can self-refer. Hours? Hours. Um, Right now, our hours are by appointment, so uh, we try and accommodate people's schedules, but because it's – since we're getting started and we're only seeing so many people a week in this boutique, um, we just ask people to call or email us, and we'll accommodate them as quickly as we can. And where do the clothes come from? The clothes are all donated generously uh, from the community. Uh, We were able to get started as quickly as we were um, by receiving donations from another affiliate. So we're always looking for donations. Our scheduled donation day is the second Friday of every month. So the next donation in Casper will be July 14th. And we have partnered with um, FC Outlet and FC and Fashion Crossroads downtown. And uh, we do a drop-off donation site at the back of FC Outlet. Um, from 10 to 1 every donation day. But in the meantime, if you're going through your clothes and just feel like you can't keep them any longer, uh, people can contact me directly, and I'm happy to pick them up. Oh, good to know. I have a lot of workwear that doesn't fit anymore. (laughs) (laughs) But it's still really good stuff, and so, yeah. Okay, Um, why do you think, and this is really, I'm thinking of the women who might push back against having to look a certain way or dress a certain way. What would be your rationale for why it's important to dress professionally or appropriately for whatever workplace they're going into? Well, and you know, the, certainly the um, – let me preface that by saying certainly the work world has changed dramatically <clears throat> since COVID. And then we live in Wyoming too, which has always been, you know, a much more casual type of environment. But what I tell people is, is that uh, there's probably a baseline of what is appropriate and not appropriate for work. But people should feel – Um, should wear what makes them feel good about themselves, that gives them confidence, um, and is appropriate at the same time. And that's part of the styling appointment that we do with people is we really try and understand um, their level of comfort, their level of what they're doing, what makes them feel good. And we have clothing that that covers the gamut, um, you know, from uh, it's Wyoming, so we have we have jeans available, we have casual clothing, we have tennis shoes, those kind of things. Because you know, in an oil fill environment or some of the other you know industries that we service here in town, those are appropriate, you know, as well as skirts and dresses and things that are much more professional. Right. Okay, that makes sense because some people love wearing dresses, other people not so much. So you do have to have a variety. Um, where are you finding the stylists? Um, those are all of our volunteer positions, so we're always looking for volunteers. Uh, so if people feel like uh, that is their calling, um, you know, you don't. Our volunteers don't have to have any kind of experience. We just need volunteers that are empathetic, that want to help someone, uh, that 
you know, enjoy putting things together. Um, uh, you know, the philosophy that I've taken is, is that if you're coming to us, we really want you to have the shopping experience. Um, we don't, we don't pre-select clothes for you. Um, and we really work with you to, uh, find things that you want. Uh, you know, we may get to a point where we, you know, uh, we may pull things out because we know they're there. Um, but, you know, we want it to be your experience. And it would take about two hours for me to sit with someone that's interested in being a stylist and uh, just kind of show them how things are set up and what they need to do when they're there, that kind of thing. Oh, very cool. I bet that's a lot of fun, actually, just getting to see all the clothes and make combinations. And yeah. uh, I, The whole thing has been qu- quite an experience for me. It's um, I've always uh, believed in I love volunteering and I love coaching and mentoring people. And this really gives me the ability to do all those things. Um, And just, uh, you know, at at some point we will have one location. Right now we have a warehouse above FC Outlet and then we have the smaller boutique at Seton House. Um, So there's there's quite a bit of moving that goes back and forth. Um, You know, so we're always needing people as well that want to help us in the warehouse as we have donations and and sort through those and help us pull out the appropriate things for now. Um, we've had to be a bit, um, well, you know, we're in a smaller location, so we can only keep a few things in one location. So sometimes we have to go back and forth to ensure that we have enough clothing for the people that are coming in. Different sizes, different preferences. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. It's different seasons, yeah. that's kind oh, of thing. Of so, course, yeah. winter versus right. summer. Yeah. And clothes are expensive, it's it's hard. I can I can imagine it's satisfying, even though it seems like such a simple thing, workwear. Um, but you're giving women a leg up in terms of helping themselves because we need to be in the workplace, a lot of us, and so it's almost like a cut, like a tax. You have to have certain clothing depending on what career you're going into. And I've certainly thought about that. It's like how much am I willing to spend every year? And it is a need. Um, so. You know, it's an appropriate. The way we've set it up is that um, we have different. So we have an uh, interview suiting and we have an employment suiting. So if you come to us uh, and need clothing for an interview, we provide you six separate, six pieces of clothing. You can pick and choose what you want, uh, as well as um, shoes, handbag, accessories, undergarments, um, as our inventory allows. Okay, enough to get you ready for that interview. And then if you secure that position, you can come back to us. And we do the same thing. Plus, we provide you with another 12 pieces of clothing. And our idea is, is that, you know, with 18 pieces of clothing, you've got a capsule wardrobe, right, that you can mix and match. And uh, hopefully will take you, uh, carry you through for a while um, until you're able to pay for additional clothing. It must be a nice boost to the old self-esteem, too, to have a nice ensemble. I certainly think in my interview processes, it's always been something I thought about, maybe even stressed about a little. Like, I want to make sure that I'm making a really good impression. (laughs) And so you're a part, uh, you're kind of an intimate part of their lives for that moment because it's a vulnerability. What am I going to wear? What am I going to look like? Right. And I think people have preconceived notions on what the expectation is for the job that they're interviewing for and uh, are concerned that maybe they won't meet up to those expectations. And again, I try and always tell people that, you know, you need to be confident in your own skin. Um, but having something for someone having something new that they know looks good on them and uh, they feel good in it, you know, can't help but but help. How busy are you guys? Um, we're seeing about which is, you know, we've just been seeing people since the middle of March. So we're suiting about two people a week, which is fairly standard for someone starting out. You know, so we're in what month number, ending ending month number three. But I, I see that picking up. And um, now that we've kind of gotten the suiting part going, you know, we'll start looking at the other types of programs that we typically offer as well. Um, you know, the what they call the flagship suiting program is what Dress for Success um, is known for. Uh, we've always been suiting people, but we really do a lot more than that now. We provide all sorts of career service programs. Uh, we do a lot of things with uh, financial literacy. And uh, my goal was is that by the time we got to the end of the summer, you know, we'd be ready to launch some of those other programs. Yeah, that's such a big part of finding a job, and it's really tailored to women. Um was that attractive to you when you saw this? Because there are other charities and things you could have worked for, giving back and goodwill operations. But this one is so, yeah, geared towards helping women in the workforce. 
I just think because I did that for as long as I did <clears throat> and really, you know, put people to work and help people with their careers. And, you know, uh, many of our clients uh, when I left Adeco were people that we put to work, you know, that we had seen move up through those companies. And, you know, it's really just a very – it's a really big passion of mine. And um, there is a men's component to dress for success, but it's a much smaller component. And I certainly see the value of that here. And uh, I'm hoping that in time we're able to to work on that too. We did, did a lot of industrial servicing at ADECO. And uh, so um, I know that that's important as well. So, Yeah. yeah. Well, and this is a bit of a digression. So we can edit this if you're like, no, I don't want to go there. But what do you think some of the those bigger challenges are for women in the workplace, like women specifically? Because I didn't really think about this much until I had my children. But then I realized how how maybe, dare I say, much harder it was going to be as a working mom. Well, I think, you know, um, you know, being a working mom brings struggles of its own to start with, you know, especially the women that we see, you know, that are uh, struggling to get out of their current situation, whether that was a homeless situation or domestic abuse or addiction or whatever that might be. You know, they're trying to get themselves going down the road, you know, much less their children. Um, I think we struggle with a living wage in Wyoming. Uh, uh, you know, all sorts of national information shows that women are paid, you know, somewhere between 70 cents and 90 cents less than men in the same role. So I think that's something that we need to continue to look at. Uh, we have to focus on child care. You know, we have to work, focus on school and those kind of things that are, are there. People have to be tenacious. And there are some bright professional women that are out there that have, you know, great degrees and can really contribute. Yeah, and then I like that you guys are concentrating down the road on the financial literacy aspect mm -hmm. of it because all of us are always learning more about that. And I just hit 30 and I'm finally, I feel like... I'm doing things I don't have as much anxiety about um, saving for retirement and all of the it's all like a scavenger hunt kind of learning where to go to find the next piece of information about what you should be doing and so I've been looking at some of the um, curriculum that some of the other affiliates have been doing and they're just doing some really great things and um, I spoke with a lender in town not too long ago about kind of what my vision for the program was. And, you know, a lot of the services that they're providing are, are really basic services, you know, so they, they do a, a budgeting class and they actually leave the class with a budget, which is, you know, very practical, right? So useful, yes. Yeah, things they can actually put to work. And, you know, they uh, talk about home buyer, be the, how, do you, how do you become a first-time home buyer? What do you need to do to make that happen? You know, how do you improve your credit score? I mean, they'll be really v very basic, applicable kinds of things that should help people. Um, a lot of them are, which I'd like to do too, are, are saying, um, we're going to, for instance, if you, if we do it for over four or five months and you meet two thirds of those, you know, perhaps we'll offer you um, an, a deposit into a savings account if you can match that. You know, a lot of these people probably never have saved for anything other than hoping they can pay for their groceries the next week. You know, so for them to be able to come in and say, it's quite an accomplishment that I have put this much money away in a savings account. So really those very practical kinds of things um, in perhaps a different way than, you know, I've ever, I've ever looked at those skills. You were talking about flagship suiting. I just want to make sure I got this right. That just means picking out the outfits, right? Right. Okay. When, it, when Dress for Success, um, it was started in 19, uh, 1997 by a woman in New York, and her grandfather gave her a $5,000 uh, inheritance gift, and she wanted to do something to uh, have it continue to give back. And so she <clears throat> met with a church locally, and they started um, a clothing um, area you know, like clothing boutique in the basement of a church. And that's how it got started. And so um, people that know about us know about the suiting program typically, but they just don't know all the other things that we're doing. And there's just so many great things. And I mean, every market has challenges and every market is different. And as I get a better feel for what other agencies are doing here, you know, we want to continue to partner with other agencies just like we've done with Seton House. We don't want to duplicate efforts. We want to provide more resources to people. And, uh, you know, how can, we, how can we broaden that scope of resources? And, you know, that's, to me, that's, um, I mean, that's the really way to make an impact. Yeah, it's like a nice stepping stone that people could be coming from different directions, but they'll find 
the resources that they need to help them. Mm -hmm. And then you were hoping to expand career service. Um, What does that look like? What's your vision? There's a lot of things that we can do. One of the things that I'm excited about is that um, this is kind of the end result of that, but we want to put together a professional women's group which is a little different than career services, but I think it's really important. So many people that come to us and that get a job still struggle every day like we all do with, you know, how do you keep that job? You know, how do you how do you make all of it work? How do you make all the ends meet? And uh, continue to need to get that kind of support, whether that's from friends or, you know, if you're lucky enough to pursue education or those kind of things. And the professional women's group would meet monthly or quarterly, would be open to anyone here in town that wanted to do it, but primarily clients that we see, and we encourage them to bring a friend, which makes it easier to go. And uh, it becomes a networking event where they can make contacts with other people, and there would be a speaker. So, for instance, we might have a night where we would have some kind of an attorney come in and talk about services that they have available, where a lot of people might not be able to find an attorney for whatever that reason is they need. Or perhaps it's a uh, it's a tax question or, um, you know, it could be something on improving yourself, continuing to improve yourself. And I feel like that those resources help people stay employed because if you have a, a network of support, um, you're much more likely to stay employed. Um, And then from a career services perspective, um, we'll do a lot of things like we'll do some of the basic things. We'll continue to help people with cover letters, resume reviews, uh, talk about uh, transferable skills, where they fit, maybe some positions that they might need help with. We'll help with job searches, um, things like that. Um, I love this. Skill training. When I was a teacher, I used to at the college at MSU (laughs) – um, one of the classes I got to teach was on resumes, cover letters, and all of that. And it's amazing. I think in today's day and age, there's sort of a generic model of what that looks like, mm-hmm. but really personalizing it and making it uh, – the transferable skills is when my eyes lit up. Yeah, what kind of skills – like you might be applying for a job as a news director, but I still – think that there are skills that I learned as a waitress that apply here. Exactly. And usually that just takes some coaching for people to think about those things. And how to how to flesh that out. Exactly. Too, because, yeah, that's not going to be obvious to the employer. So what, what are we going to put in those bullet points? That's right. Yeah. And then how to make it stand out, but it doesn't necessarily need to be fuchsia. <laughs> and those aesthetic details, too. Exactly. Which goes back to the, what you're wearing in the interview process. And, and even things about, you know, the um, the online systems and the kind of resume that will help move through faster and, and not get kicked out for the wrong reasons and and pulling out the... Oh, yeah, PDF versus Word doc, yeah. And pulling out the right uh, points in the, you know, the right components in the in the job description online. If you don't respond to a certain amount of those, then your resume gets kicked out because they assume you're not qualified. And, you know, it's more than just trying to, to meet with someone anymore. And then I think about mock interviews or even going over those mm-hmm. things. Um, what do you do? It's easy to freeze. Uh, do you shake hands? Do you not? Mm-hmm. It's... I don't think it's as easy as just wing it. Not all of us have that natural charisma and grace. And so kind of having a game plan and that team that you said behind you, I think that gives you the confidence, but it's also like you can picture it and then it becomes possible. I think you're, I think you're exactly right. And when you go in and you're confronted with that situation, if you've planned a little bit, especially those first couple of times, hopefully you're able to draw back on that resource when you're, uh, you know, when you're maybe uh, maybe stumped a bit about a question or wasn't something you prepared for. Um, we talk about that too. We have a, we're going to eventually, eventually we'll have a, a career center. Um, my, I, my thought about the career center again is where they can come in. These services will have laptops available. They'll actually work with someone to go through all that with them. And part of that packet includes, you know, these are maybe the top 10 or 15 questions that um, not everybody asks, but will lead into other things. And if you're prepared to answer these, you know, you probably can answer something else that comes to you differently. Um, And just thinking about those things before you go in, I don't think you can ever be too prepared uh, for an interview because a lot of it is just what what is your confidence level going to be meeting someone that you don't know anything about? You don't really know a lot about the job, even if you've researched them online, which hopefully you have, and looked um, over the job description. You still have limited information before you go in. And it sounds like this would be something where they would have access to technology, too, which, of course, there are services here in town where you can get access to Wi-Fi, the Internet, and a computer, like the library comes to mind. Right. But um, sometimes it's full. Sometimes, you know, 
you need someone it's you want someone there to support you and watch you as you do it or I think about writers groups and hey can you look this over <laughs> and yeah without I, I think a lot of us take that for granted too we all you know everyone who's lucky enough to have a phone and a laptop just it's hard to imagine what it would be like trying to get a job without those <laughs> things and, and I think there are you know I I think that was one of the biggest realities I had when I started with this company. There's several uh, communities or several affiliates in large communities, and that was kind of their goal last year, was to work with community partners that would will- were willing to work with them to provide laptops to people that didn't have them or didn't have that resource. And, you know, what that looked like. And then where did that go from there? And how did they develop the training and the skill assessment and, and the skill development on on that process to help people become closer to being able to do some of the things that I do think we take for granted every day. Yeah, it definitely, in the last few years, too, technology has changed so much even. I've learned so many things about um, just like, do you need to send a PDF? Don't send it because it'll manipulate your text. And those little things that if you've kind of been, you've sort of not had access to those things for maybe a couple of years even, you could be so out of the loop on things that could make or break um, your opportunity to have a specific job. And and not everyone is, is good at uh, researching and checking Google or seeing if there's a YouTube video that you can watch. You know, I mean, some people just need someone to sit by them and help guide them through that process. And then I think about skills, too, and, you know, resources for, hey, this is where you can go if you need to complete your GED mm-hmm. or... There are ways to build your resume mm-hmm. because I think a lot of us even are stumped. Even people who've had <coughs> several jobs, when you go to revamp it, it's like, how can I make this look better? What what could I put on here? And so train even something like CPR training or these different events that often we can we can find for free, it's hard knowing where to go. I think that's, you know, that's one of the things the community can continue to do is provide those resources. But I do think having someone that's able to look at it will see it in a totally different, totally different eye and hopefully could ask you those questions that might help you, might trigger those things that you could add to it. And there are certainly a lot of jobs out there. And so it it would be nice to see more women in the workplace, I think. And So this is a really cool opportunity for people to get their foot in the door. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, we placed a lot of women um, while I was at ADECO. um, But it would would be great to be able to see women in other roles other than perhaps where we were putting them. And uh, you're right, there are never enough really good employees out there. Um, But lots of opportunities for employees to either start their careers with someone um, with a lot of good employers or someone to continue – continue into their next step of their career. So. Oh, well, this is awesome. Okay, so one more time, people can make an appointment to find the boutique at Seton House? Uh, what they can do is they can do one of two things. They can email me at casper.dressforsuccess.org, or they can call me directly at 307-333-3892. And if they forget that and they call Seton House, um, they'll take a message and call me. Okay, perfect. And that's where then from there you can set up an appointment and have a consultation. Did that's you say? right. Yes. So okay. you you just set up an appointment uh, to meet your schedule, and we'll want to know um, you know what you're interviewing for. We get a few details before you come in, so that we can be prepared, and uh, you know how quickly your interview is, because we certainly want to accommodate that as well. And then for donations. They're taking them behind the FC outlet. So that is, that's downtown. It's on 2nd Street. Okay. It's like across from Eggington's, I think. Yes. Okay. And (coughs) that's the second Friday of every month. Is there a time frame? Yes. The next one is July 14th, and it's from 10 to 1 every day, 10 to 1 on those Fridays. Um, FC outlet has been very generous to take other donations around that. I've just tried not to send people there. So um, if you have clothing and you don't want to wait till July 14th, you can call me again at 307-333-3892. And I'd be glad to meet you at FC Outlet or um, come and pick it up. This has been Report to Wyoming, presented in the public interest by Town Square Media.